everyone, this is Michelle Kane with Michelle Kane Photography and Michelle Kane Actions. On this tutorial, I'll take you through a complete basic color edit and we'll also look at how toning a photo can completely change the look and feel of the image. So we're going to look at this close-up portrait image and this was shot with the Canon 135, um, f 2.5 and 640th of a second, ISO 400. I really adore the creamy background that this lens creates and we're going to be playing that up with different color toning options inside of Photoshop. All of my images start in Lightroom for basic fixes and today I'm only going to be changing two things on the image before taking it into Photoshop. First I'm going to change the camera calibration to neutral to flatten out the contrast just a bit. So we're in the develop module here inside of Lightroom and the camera calibration as Lightroom brings it in will be set to standard and we want to just drop that down to neutral and if you're shooting raw then you have these options to do this kind of stuff in post-production if you're shooting JPEG you're going to have to set your camera up to neutral before you start shooting so just by hitting neutral here it's going to flatten out a little bit of that contrast and just reduce the overall pop in the picture and it's kind of counterintuitive to what you might think we want to do starting out with really poppy image that's a good thing right well not really because the fact of the matter is is that most actions add contrast and pop and that kind of thing darkens up the darks and if you start with too much of that inside of Lightroom or on your basic image then by the time you add all that stuff inside of Photoshop it's overkill so we want to neutral every, neutralize everything out and the camera calibration really helps to get us going in that direction. The second thing we're going to do is just the tone curve. Now again, Lightroom will preset everything to medium contrast when it brings the images in and we want to drop that down to a linear tone curve. And linear tone curve will definitely flatten out the image just a little bit more and uh, kind of make it a little bit dull and that's okay. That's what we want because again we're going to add all of our pop and contrast inside of Photoshop. Now normally I would also address the white balance of this picture. It's definitely very cool, very kind of grayish in tone. Um, you know I would do that with a series of temperature and tent slider changes but I'm going to skip that today and we're going to address those issues inside of Photoshop using my hardy actions. Not everybody uses a raw editor and I want to make sure that I demonstrate how you can address those issues inside of Photoshop. So these are our two basic changes that we're going to make. I'm just going to actually hit the backslash key and that's going to show you the before, that's the straight out of camera and we're going to look at the after. This is actually what we're going to edit here. So going into Photoshop, I've already taken this picture in and we'll just pull that up here. So once this picture is up in Photoshop, we need to first address the white balance issues. So I'm going to go to the heart and soul action set and there's a section called color enhancements and corrections and the first one there is called turn up the heat and we definitely need to add some warmth to this picture again it's really really cool so I'm just going to click turn up the heat and hit play in the actions palette and immediately uh, it warms the picture up quite a bit now it's only set at 50% opacity so we can increase that or decrease that we could open up the action and add more warmth or reduce the warmth there's you know a lot of variation there where you can customize exactly how warm you want this action to to play out at so at 50 percent opacity uh, I think I'm going to drop that down just a little bit maybe somewhere around like oh, 44 percent just to give her skin tone more of a human skin tone and not so gray and what this picture is also lacking is an amount of uh, magenta, some sort of pink kind of tone going on. And skin tones will always have yellows and it'll have pinks. And when you're addressing white balance, you need to address both of those things usually. So um, in order to do kind of a pinker tone on the picture, I'm going to drop down to the Creative Heart set. And in that set, there's a whole series of tones. And for these, um, what I'm looking to do is add that pink. And I know that Rosy Dusk is a great action for adding in um, kind of a reddish pinkish tone. So I'm going to hit play on Rosy Dusk and when that plays um, it's too much. You know at 100% opacity I can see it's definitely going to help her skin but it's just too much at 100. 
So I'm going to drop that all the way down to zero and then just start to inch it up until I see the proper warmth that I want on her skin where it looks healthy and um, pink and, and human. So maybe somewhere around 33% looks good to me. The next thing I'm going to address is her eyes. Now she's got good catch lights going on in her eyes, but she's got super duper dark brown eyes. Uh, eyes and teeth, they're important parts of the picture to address. So what we're going to do is go up to the Heart and Soul collection and in the digital makeup set, there's an action called Glisten. Now this is going to sharpen and brighten at the same time. I love it for eyes and teeth. Um, eyes catch lights, they need to be brightened. Uh, teeth look better when they're bright and they're white and they're sharp. So hitting play on Glisten, it's going to give us a little stop message to tell us to go ahead and use a soft white brush to paint in the sharpening and a touch of brightness just where needed. And with these actions, I've built in a lot of stop messages for you along the way to kind of give you prompts, help you to know what to do with them, when to mask them off. Um, so always be looking for those inside of the actions. So I'm going to hit continue. And all of those effects of Glisten are hidden underneath this black mask. So with, again, the white brush, I'm going to hit B for brush. And I'm going to hit the 4 key on my keyboard to switch my... Uh, layer or my brush opacity to 40 percent. I'm going to come down here and just paint this glisten right over the catch lights a couple of times lifting up on my mouse and if I go too far I'll hit the X key on my keyboard and that'll change my brush color back to black so I can cover some of that back up if I've overdone it and made her catch lights too insane. I'll hit the X key again that changes the um, the color of my brush to white and now I'll just kind of go along the iris of her eye just to brighten that dark dark brown up just a little bit. You don't want to go crazy. Alien eyes are not a good thing. Um, you know, pull back. Don't go nuts on the eyes. A little bit of sharp catch light that looks nice, um, but don't go too much further than that. Next I'm going to run this just a little bit over her teeth. Again, it just sharpens them up, brightens them up just a little bit. If there's anything else that needed sharpened, just an ounce on this picture, I would also run the brush over those areas, but there really isn't. I'm not one for crunchy, sharpened hair, so we're not going to run it over the hair or anything like that. We'll just leave everything soft. So once we have the glisten taken care of, we're going to move on basically to darkening up the background and making it a little bit more um, profound. She's going to pop out from the background a little bit when it becomes darker. So in order to do that, I'm going to jump back down to the Creative Heart set and there's a section called Rich and all of these actions will add a rich darker kind of color to your pictures. Sumptuous Smolder is one of my favorites and I'm going to hit play on that. And once it's done it'll again tell you that using a low opacity brush like 20 or 30 percent opacity brush, black one, um, you're going to want to paint over the skin and the eyes or any other areas that become too dark. So Sumptuous Smolder is more or less for your backgrounds and your clothing and stuff like that. It's not for skin necessarily at 100% and uh, we need to remove it from those areas. Also with Sumptuous Smolder, the entire action plays out at 70% opacity. Now I want to actually have a darker background so I'm going to increase this opacity of the entire action. It's going to darken everything up and I can open up the action grouping here and also come into this layer called Less Smolder. Now Less Smolder just decreases the amount of smolder or darkness in the picture. If I click that off, it's really going to get dark. And if I click it back on, it's going to brighten up the picture a little bit. So if I wanted it even darker and richer, I could come in here with the opacity of the Less Smolder layer and I could reduce that until it gets really, really dark. Or if I wanted it really brightened up, in my midtones, I could increase that opacity and brighten the entire picture up. I'm going to go ahead and drop it back down to 50 because I'm pretty happy with that, how dark the background has gotten. But as we can see, this is just way too much darkness on her skin, her eyes. It, it's overkill, so we need to remove it from her skin. So I'm going to close down this sumptuous smolder action group here. Make sure I click on the layer mask and we always use the opposite color of a brush when we're using the layer mask. So I've got a white mask, I need a black brush. And that's exactly what I've got chosen over here in my toolbar as a black brush. 
I like to start with low opacities, like 20 and 30 percent. So, you know, I could come up here and in my opacity slide this down to 20, or I can again use those numbers on my keyboard. 2 for 20 percent, 5 for 50, 8 for 80 percent, 1 5 really quick for 15 percent. Those keyboard shortcuts will save you a lot of time. So coming in here with a 20% opacity black brush, I'm going to start to remove some she was smolder from first her eyes and then her face. And I like it kind of on her hair to darken it up a little bit, but we just definitely don't need this darkness on her face to this degree. So I usually come in and take a lot of this out. If there's any areas in the background that I want to remove it from, I would do that here too. Um, but now that I've taken it mostly off of her face, I want to selectively add it back in. And this is to contour and to shape her face and give her depth and, um, you know, oomph to her cheeks and maybe her lips. So again, switching my brush color back from black to white. So white's going to reveal, black's going to conceal. So white is uh, revealing this effect. Take my size of my brush back down. I still have a 20% opacity brush and I'm going to put sumptuous smolder back onto her cheeks. Now again, this shapes her cheeks, it gives her a little color, gives her a little dimension, it kept, keeps the picture from feeling too flat. And I think that looks pretty good right there. So once we've done the darkening of the background, it just, it needs a punch. It needs some sort of oomph in the picture. So we're going to go back up into the Heart and Soul collection and we're going to go to um, Light Optimizer. That's in the Light Treatment section here. And I'm going to hit Play on Light Optimizer. And you'll notice in the Layers palette that I am playing these all just one on top of the other. And that means I can come back to any uh, layer in the Layers palette and change it at any time. I'm not flattening as I go. I'm just building action upon action. And I didn't write any of these actions that would make you have to flatten your picture first. I really hate that effect and that requirement on some actions and so you will never see um, a prompt that tells you to run it on a background layer or flatten your, your picture first. You can just run everything right on top of the, the last layer. So we're going to hit Light Optimizer here and what it's going to do is give us some contrast and some oomph into the picture. So if I click this layer off you can see we went from pretty flat to, you know, pretty intense contrast in the picture. And I think that's too much contrast. Really, I'm looking to kind of give a pop to her face, but not go crazy, uh, making it way over the top contrasty. So I'm just going to drop the opacity of this entire layer down to maybe like, oh, 30%. That looks pretty good to me. And if I want to reduce some of the contrast, and a few places in the picture, maybe on the sides of the picture, I don't like how dark the sides have gotten, then I can simply use a black brush on my white mask. So I'm going to go grab a black brush. And I've got my brush opacity set to 20% already, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that. And I'll just increase the size of my brush with the right bracket key. And I'm going to come in here and basically start to mask off some of this extra contrast that I just created. And even though my brush is set at 20%, I'm letting up on my mouse as I go. I'm just gradually building those brush strokes up as opposed to going in at 100%. If I felt her hair was too contrasty, you know, I could always go over that and reduce the contrast there. Or maybe her eyes are just a little too contrasty. I'll just zing them over there real quick a couple times and that will lower the contrast on those eyes. So now again if we click this layer off, this light optimizer layer off, we have kind of a flat dull picture and now just a little bit of pop that we need. So that light optimizer was pretty much for the skin mostly and not really for the background. A little bit on the background but not much. For the continuation of this tutorial please continue to part two.